Okay, hello. In this video, we're going to cover um, 2.6b, which in this section, it was talking about um, the 2.6a was when we did the sum, difference, product, and quotient of the functions, right? So when we added two functions together, subtracted them, multiplied two functions together, or even divided two functions, okay? But there was another group of algebraic manipulation that we could do with two functions that we kind of skipped over in that particular time that we covered it in the past. And that one other operation is called a composition, okay? So 2.6b is mostly gonna concentrate on the composition of two functions, okay? So let's talk about what is a composition and then we'll talk about how we can um, work problems that have to do with compositions. So um, a comp another way of combining two functions is the form of composition of one with the other. For instance, f of x equal to x squared and g of x equal to x plus one, um, the composition of f with g is written like this. So it's f of g of x. Okay, and you say f, you can say f of g or f composed with g, but normally the language I use is f of g. So instead of plugging in x, you're plugging in a whole nother function, okay? Because normally when we say f of x, you have a function in terms of x, and then if we say find f of 1, you plug in one for all your x's. Well, now we're saying f of g, so you're gonna replace all of your x's with the g function. So for instance, let's pretend your function f was um, x squared plus one, or plus, let me make it a little bit more complicated, two x, right? Then if you were finding f of one, you would be plugging in one for x, okay? And then you would compute that and end up with the numerical value three. Now, what if you were given a G function, um, something like X plus one? Well, then in that case, you're still replacing your X just like you did with the one, but instead of replacing the X's with ones, you're replacing them with the G function. And so you can put G of X inside of here, but that's not really gonna help us to simplify it. Let's actually plug in what g of x is equivalent to. And g of x is equivalent to x plus 1. So I should be plugging in x plus 1 where there was an x in f. OK, so I'm taking my f function and I am replacing these x's with the g function. And so you end up with something like this. And this can be simplified. Okay, you won't get a numerical value, you'll get another algebraic expression, but it can be simplified. I think after everything is said and done, I will have plus 4x and then plus 3 after I simplify everything. Okay, um, now they're using the example where f of x is x squared and g of x is x plus 1. Well, remember, if you're doing f of g of x, First, plug in what is g of x? Well, we know that g of x is equal to x plus 1. So really, you're finding f of x plus 1. What does that symbolize? What does it mean you need to do? It means you need to take the f function, and instead of plugging in x here, you're going to actually plug in x plus 1 over here. So that x will become what you're plugging in. It will become the x plus 1, and then you still have your square. And you could simplify that if you wanted to, um, or you could just leave it like that. It's just completely up to you. But normally when we say this, I say f of g. Now, when you're talking about the compositions of functions, um, this is kind of what's happening. So you're taking an x value and you're plugging it into g, and then you have an output, right? Your outputs are g of x. So you have x, you're plugging it into this function, right? So this robot is doing something with that in input. When you do something to that input, it becomes this output. 
And then what happens is that that output becomes the input for the function f. So a different machine, right? A different robot doing a different thing. So I'm gonna take this output from that robot and I'm gonna take it and make it an input to this robot, okay? And so what comes out is, looks like this, okay? My input was g of x and my output is f of g of x. And so they're saying that the composition function is just a way of bypassing this double information and just taking an input and being able to come up with a function so that you can go from the input straight to the final, final output, okay? So instead of using two robots, you'll use one robot, okay? Um, so here's some examples. So it says, given that f of x is equal to x plus two and g of x is equal to four minus x squared, find all of the following compositions, okay? So for the first one, they want g f of g of x, okay? Remember, I'm gonna write the f function up here. f was this and g of x was this. So when you have it on the outside, the f needs to stay on the outside. Remember, this is f of g of x. So this is f of g of x. And then you have to close both of your parentheses, okay? This is literally the definition of f of g, okay? Or f composed with g. Some people also call it fog because it looks like an O. It's more like a degree symbol, but instead of it being like a superscript, which degrees are like superscripts, they're like little tiny exponents kind of, okay? Um, it's not a number, it's just a symbol, but it's not a superscript here. It's just in the center. It's not up high like a degree, it's in the center. So it's just a symbol. It looks a lot like a degree symbol, but it's in the center versus up on top on the right, okay? When I write 75 degrees, I always put the little degree up there. This is the same symbol, but it's not up high. It's in the center, okay? So it's not there. It's more like right here, but it is the same symbol. It's a little circle, okay? Um, and so then let's see what that means. So I'm going to work from the inside out. Remember the orders of operations. You always have to go from the inside out. I have not been given an X value at all. It's just still a random X variable, but I do have an expression for G of X. I know that G of X is equivalent to four minus X squared. So we replace the G of X with the four minus X squared because those are equivalent, which means this statement is equivalent to this statement, okay? Now it's saying F of this expression. Remember what that means. That means to take this and plug it into the F function. So the F function says X plus two. Well, guess what? The X is going to become what's in this parentheses. So now it's four minus X squared plus two. And if you combine your like terms, you end up with negative X squared plus six. And so this is essentially the function. So instead of taking an input and plugging it in here and then getting an output, and then taking that output and plugging it in here, you can get a shortcut to the answer. For example, pretend um, x equals one, okay? If I find g of one, so I can find that output, I would have four minus one, which is three. Then if I use that as the input for f, it would be three plus two, which is five. But if I go to the f of g function that you just created, okay, and I want to plug in that x value that I started with, all I have to do is plug in 1 into this machine, and it will give me the same final output, okay? So instead of plugging the 1 into one machine and getting an output, then plugging that output as an input into the second machine, and getting your final output, you can plug in the original X value into this one machine that covers both functions and it will give you the same final output, okay? So it's all we're doing here is basically finding 
the one robot that does both of the jobs, okay? Now, here, notice the only difference, my functions are still the same. F of X is still X plus two, and G of X is still four minus X squared. However, now when we rescue for G of F, remember G is on the left, so it's on the outside. So it's actually G of F of X and then close your parentheses. And so since you don't have an X value, right? There's no number in there. So I can't plug a number into F. What I have to do is I have to write a whole expression for F of X. And we know that the expression for F of X is equivalent to X plus two. So instead of writing F of X, I can write X plus two because these two things are equivalent, right? It says they're equal. Once you have this, remember what this means. It means plug in X plus two into G everywhere there's an X. So this is my G function. This X right here is gonna become X plus two. And so there it is. Now, every time you plug in a whole expression, it is very wise to keep it in parentheses. Even when you plug in numbers, notice how when I plugged in the one, I used parentheses. When I had to plug in this three, I didn't really use parentheses because I was just adding two. But when I plugged in this one, I certainly did use the parentheses, okay? So make sure that when you're plugging in this X plus two, and you replace that X that you put the X plus two in parentheses. So if I follow my orders of operations, I have to apply my square first. X plus two times another X plus two is this after I FOIL and combine my like terms. Then I'm gonna do my multiplication. So I really have like a negative one here that I have to distribute. And so that would give me four minus X squared minus four X minus four. And then these would read cancel and I end up with negative X squared and negative four X, okay? And so then that's the expression. This is the one robot that will take any input of G and get you all the way to the output after both robots have done their jobs, okay? Now notice that in this particular functions for F and G that they gave us, when we did F of G, we got negative x squared plus six. When we did g of f, we got negative x squared minus four x. And all they're saying is note that those two things are not the same, okay? Even if you added x squared on both sides and that wasn't there anymore, six is still not equal to negative four x for every single x. Yeah, there is a four, an x value that will make this true, but it needs to be correct for all the inputs, right? Not just only one. Okay, so just notice that they're not the same for all your X values. Now, the last one, again, F of X is X plus two and G of X is four minus X squared. And so here it's asking me for G of F of two. So what they want is G of F of negative two. So what does that mean? That means I need to plug negative two into F. And when I do that, it's gonna be negative two plus two, okay? Which gives you G of zero. And if you plug in zero into here, you get four minus zero squared or just four, okay? So if you didn't know the robot for G of F of negative two, if you didn't know the robot for G of F, you can still get the answer, okay? They just cheated because they already found G of F in the last problem. And G of F was negative X squared minus four X. And so since they already found the robot that does this whole computation, they just went ahead and plugged negative two into this function. So notice they plugged in negative two for X here and negative two for X there. This is positive four, but with the negative makes negative four and a negative and a negative make a positive eight. And so you get the same value that I got over here by plugging the negative two into the first robot, right? First robot being the F, and then that output got plugged into the last robot, which was G. 
And so then this is my final output. Whereas here, you were already given the robot for the whole process. And so you just had to plug it into one thing and then you were done, okay? So, So it says in example, I don't know why they say example five, it should say example one. In example one, you form the composition of two given functions. In calculus, it is also important to be able to identify two functions that make up a given composition, okay? So this means that they will give you a function and you basically need to figure out what was the first function, right? What was the first robot? What did that look like? And then what did the second robot look like so that after plugging it into the first one and then plugging the result into the second one, I can go just straight from the first output to the final, the first input to the final output. Okay, so I basically am shortcutting. I'm giving you the shortcut and you need to tell me what were the two steps to get that to happen, okay? So for instance, this function here, h of x equal to 3x minus 5. Notice that you could replace everything in the parentheses with an X, leaving you with X cubed. But then what was in the parentheses is the other function, G of X. And so if you were to do um, F of G of X, you would get that. So notice that this can be written as some function in terms of X cubed. And then because X, F of X is X cubed, this, just be, this whole thing becomes F of G of X. Okay, the best way to, to use words to help explain this is inner function and outer function. So the inner function is very easy to identify, right? The inner function is the 3x minus 5. And so that would be my inner function. So I would call g of x my inner function. Isn't g on the inside of these parentheses? Then if you want to know what the outer function is, take what you had and all you do is replace the inner stuff with the big giant X. And so then that's where they get that the outer function would be just X cubed. But it helps if you play with those words, inner and outer. Now, let's look at example two. It says the number of bacteria in a refrigerated food is given by this function here where t is between two and 14, okay? And it could be two and it could be 14 because of the equal bars. And t, capital T, is the temperature of the food in degrees Celsius. When the food is removed from refrigeration, the temperature of the food is given by this function, where t equals zero to three hours, okay? Now it says, find the composition in of t of little t and interpret its meaning in context, okay? So remember, you're going to have some amount of time that has passed, and then you would know the temperature of the food. Once you know the temperature of the food, then you could plug it into this formula to find out the number of bacteria that will happen, okay? So what does that mean? That means you're basically calculating the number of bacteria after so many hours, okay? So let's go find n of t of little t. So remember, n of t of little t means n of t of little t, okay? And so what does that mean? That means I'm going to take my n function and um, And instead of using capital T, I'm going to use the function capital T. So notice that the function capital T is 4T plus 2. So that means that this T right here becomes 4T plus 2. This T right here becomes 4T plus 2. And then, of course, you do have to FOIL this out. So 4T times 4T is 16T squared. 4t times 2 is 8t, 2t, 2 times 4t is another 8t, which makes 16t, and 2 times 2 is 4. 
Here they just distributed the negative 80 and got these two terms. Finally, they distributed the 20 and they got all three of these terms and they brought down all three of those terms and then combined their like terms. So notice that the positive 30, th sorry, the positive 320T minus 320T cancel. So you have 320T squared and then 80 minus 160 plus 500 is 420. So remember this basically represents the number of bacteria um, as a function of the amount of time that the food has been out of refrigeration, okay? And then for part B, so this is actually for part B, this is for part A. For part B, um, the bacteria, it says uh, how much time will have passed for the bacteria to reach 2000. Well, if the bacteria is reaching 2000, then that means I know exactly how many number, the number of bacteria. So this tells me the number of bacteria, but I know what it is. So they set that, that expression equal to this 2000. And then they solved the equation. The first thing you would have to do is subtract 420, oh, 2000 minus 420. And so you would get 320 T squared equal to 1580. Then you would divide both sides by 320. And so I would get 4.9375. And then you would take the square root of both sides. You get T equals plus or minus. Um, 2.2220, da, 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 right? Um, but it doesn't make sense for T to equal a negative amount of time. So T is obviously going to equal the positive of this value. Okay, so that's where they get T equal to 2.2 hours. And then again, it says, note that when you solve this equation, you reject the negative value because it is not in the domain of the composite function. Remember over in the definition, they told you that little t was between zero and three, okay? That negative number is not in this little interval that they gave you for t. So it's not in the domain. So it cannot be part of or the answer. Also just in context, right? Time can't be negative. So in context, you would outrule the negative as well. So we do have some practice problems. We have three practice problems. So let's go ahead and work on these. So they want us to find three different pieces. So I'm gonna call this one part A, part B, and part C, okay? So for F of G, it means to take f of g of x and then close both of my parentheses. So then I'm gonna go from the inside out. You're gonna take the f is gonna stay the same. And instead of writing g of x, I'm gonna write what g of x is equivalent to, okay? And then when I'm finding f of this, remember you're replacing the x with what's inside this parentheses. So it becomes x minus nine plus six. Well, I don't technically need these parentheses because there's no power and there's no coefficient. So there's no simplifying of that first expression, which means I just get x minus three, okay? So that's for part A. For part B, we're doing g of f which means G goes on the outside and then F of X goes on the inside. So in this case, I'm actually taking this whole function and plugging it in for X over there. So what is the F function? The F function is X plus six. And when I plug that into the G function, I get X plus six and then the minus nine. And similarly, you don't have any powers or coefficients to multiply or distribute. So it's just gonna be X minus three or X plus six minus, minus nine, which is still X minus three. And in this case, they were the same, coincidental, okay? 
Now we're going to do g of g. And this one's a little weird to think about. Okay. You're essentially using the g function twice. So we're going to put g of g of x. Work from the inside out. So I'm going to replace the inside g with x minus 9. But now I got to plug that into the g function, which means that it becomes x minus 9 minus 9. So I'm replacing this x with x minus 9. And so then I get x minus 9 minus 9, which is x minus 18. And that's what we get for that one. Okay, so that one's certainly tricky. Now let's try our second example. So for our second example, we have part A, f of g, which means f of g, which means f, and instead of g, I'm going to put x squared, because g is equal to x squared. And then instead of f of x squared, this is going to become the x squared, and then I'm going to have plus 4. And you can't really simplify that, so that's just the answer there. Then it says find g of f. So that means g is on the outside and f is on the inside. So what is the g function? The g function is x plus 4. And if I plug that into the g function, I get x plus 4 squared, which is x squared plus 8x plus 16. Okay. Then for the d, we're going to find the domain of g. So if you look at domain of G, the domain of G is going to be all real numbers. Why is it all real numbers? Because I can square any number, right? This is not a fraction and it's not a radical and it's not, um, well, we haven't learned about the other situations, but it's not anything that's gonna cause anything to go crazy or undefined, okay? So that means I can basically plug anything I want into the f of g function. Remember, this, this is the inputs, right? And when you square them, what happens when you square them? What happens when you square all the positive numbers? Don't you get all the positive numbers? Um, you would get, when I square zero, I get zero. When I square all my positive numbers, I just get all the positive numbers. However, when you square all the negative numbers, you also get all the positive numbers, okay? So this is the range of G. And believe it or not, um, that range is the input, right, for the other function. So this is the same as the domain of F, okay? Remember what you're doing when you do f of g. Here's your little x. It goes in to the g robot and out pops g of x output. Then that goes into this robot and out, pop, out pops this value, OK? And so essentially what you're doing is if you want to know the domain of f of g, you need to figure out what are the numbers that you're going to get here, because those are the ones that are going to go into this. Okay, so you basically have to find these outputs, which are the range. Okay, so you're going to take your x, figure out all the numbers you could plug into g, and then figure out what those outputs would look like. Once you know what those outputs would look like, those are the inputs for f. And then the last one is this function here. So it says you have two functions there, it wants you to identify f of g. Remember, this is f of g of x. So do you see anybody inside something else right now? I do. I personally see, and this one has two answers, by the way. I'll show you the first one, which is the intuitive one. And then I'll show you the other one if you're like super clever, right? Um, so the first answer is what I see x squared minus 7 inside the radical, right? So then I would say my inside function, right, the inside one, is going to be x squared minus 7. If I want to know what the outside expression is going to be, I'm going to rewrite this whole thing, but instead of the inside, I'm just going to put an x. Well, that would look like 
the cube root of x then, okay? One rule is when you're deciding who's the inside and the outside, you can never let f or g be x. Never, never, never. Don't do it, okay? Because then you're not identifying the inside and the outside, okay? The other way, which is pretty clever, but I have had some students see it this way, okay, is they think that the input is actually just x squared. And so if I want to know what the out, outer function is, you're going to replace the x squared with x. And so then this becomes your outside function. So this is your outside function. And if you plug that guy in, you would get this function here. The same thing here. This is your outside function. And if you were to take that and plug it in there, you would get this function. So there's actually multiple answers. The only thing you can't do is you can't say that g of x is x and then f of x is the cube root of x squared minus seven. Because if I plug in x for x, it's the same thing. No, it doesn't work like that. You can never, never, never let an outside function or an inside function just be x when you're trying to identify the insides and the outsides. Now, right now, we're probably not gonna do too much with that concept, but I promise you when you get to calculus, being able to visualize the inside and the outside is gonna be super, super important, okay? Because eventually you're gonna learn something called chain rule. And that thing, even though it's hard the first time you see it in Cal 1, it gets harder when you get to Cal 2 when you see it again, but more complex. Oh man, and then when you get to Cal 3 in three dimensions, it gets even more complicated. Um, so to be proficient at this chain rule that you'll eventually learn about, you definitely wanna practice seeing the insides versus the outsides, okay? Okay, well, that is the end of this particular section, and then I will be continuing with the next section very soon.